through the ranks to take charge of nearly 900 firefighters. During his time in the service, he's been involved in handling many major emergencies in the area. This report comes now from Christopher Conybeare. The task of tackling major fires like the one at the Spillers factory in Avermouth has been the responsibility of Frederick Ponsfeld since 1980. But his experience of firefighting goes back to 1947. Now, when I came into the service, uh, we turned out hanging on to the side of the appliance, the old Braidwood uh, style. It wasn't unknown for the odd fireman to, to fall off. You can just imagine trying frantically to get dressed cavorting along the uh, streets so that one had uh, was fully equipped and the time we arrived at the incident uh, it was really something uh, now of course we have the limousine fully enclosed uh, types and it, it makes a difference let's talk about some of the incidents that you've been involved in in 1951 in Avonmouth there was a considerable oil fire there I think it was the, it was the biggest fire experienced in this country uh, outside of the wartime uh, experiences and uh, it, it was the biggest fire I've ever uh, attended. It was on the first attendance from, from Bridewell. And uh, the fire spread with amazing rapidity. There were explosions, tanks exploding. Britain's biggest peacetime oil fire sweeps the 850-acre oil tank farm at Royal Edward Dock, Avonmouth with hoses and sprinklers playing on nearby undamaged tanks to prevent them exploding in the enormous heat. Firemen from every county in the southwest, including some from London, go into action with foam pumps to confine the terrifying flames to one area. There were several firemen injured, but remarkably, uh, none was killed, apart from two operatives who were on the tank which exploded in the first place. You received the MBE in 1974, and in 1980, you received the Queen's Fire Service Medal. Now, that followed the riots in St. Paul's. Could I say at once that the award, of course, was to, to the, uh, the brigade because of its outstanding uh, performance on that particular uh, night. Uh, there were many fires, many properties had been set on fire. Uh, there was mob uh, violence and the brigade had to operate in very difficult uh, circumstances, but um, they held their ground, they chased off some looters, and I'm sure that uh, every fireman in the country after that incident walked just a little bit taller. If I can move on to another incident, a, a, a ship fire, the, the Marquis. Mm. Um, what, what actually happened there? This is a, a general cargo vessel down at uh, Avonmouth. Of course, we have some very high risks in the Avonmouth, including the shipping risk. And uh, she went on fire uh, one morning, and we tried to get into the lower hold, which we eventually did, but the fire crept round behind us, and we were lucky to, uh, to get away with it. She threw a list, uh, ship firefighting, it's all, always a great problem because of the stability factor. At one time, we had to flood the hold. It's the only way we could put it out. Looking back, how much have you enjoyed your career? Well, if I had to start all over again, I think I choose to be a professional fireman. There's nothing more exciting, uh, nothing gives you greater reward than you go out and you've effected a rescue and have carried out a first... He spent his first day out of uniform and virtually out of the firing line. Fred Ponsford has finally hung up his helmet on his 62nd birthday as Chief Fire Officer of the County of Avon. Well, he joined the fire service 37 years ago after spending the war as a glider pilot. It was the only job, he said, to give him excitement after surviving D-Day, Arnhem and the Rhine crossing without even a scratch. The riots in St Paul's in Bristol in 1980. When the police withdrew, firemen stayed on to fight the flames throughout the night. Leading his men was the chief fire officer the world press dubbed the modest hero. Fred Ponsford was awarded the Queen's Fire Service Medal, which he accepted on behalf of all his men who'd stayed in St Paul's on that night. On his last day of service, he paid tribute to their bravery. It looked to me as though about half of St Paul's was on fire. There were about 12, 15 quite uh, serious fires. Uh, firemen chasing looters uh, away, warehouse uh, on fire, and um, a situation unprecedented in, in the annals of firefighting in this country where firemen 
uh, were being prevented from, uh, from uh, fighting a fire. And the way they acquitted themselves on that occasion, uh, I think every fireman in the country uh, walked just a little bit taller afterwards. Perhaps not so dramatic, but far more frequent, were the blazes continually breaking out in the paper stacks at St Anne's board mills. Never content to sit behind a desk, the chief officer was generally at the scene of the fires his men fought. He was deputy chief when the million pound blaze which gutted Speedwell School broke out just days after the formation of the Avon Fire Brigade in 1974. On many occasions, fires claimed lives. Did he ever come to terms with the deaths? Firemen learn to cope with this. I think it's a situation where children are involved. I've mentioned I've been to a fire where five children have died, three children at Wimborne Road over in Bedminster, many road accidents where a child has been very badly injured and dead and the odd fire. And um, this is what casts an, air, uh, an atmosphere of gloom over a, st over a station because firemen are very responsive to um, ch children's laughter because uh, so often they hold in their arms small bodies which will never laugh again. And um, I think this is uh, why we have so many children here and farmers love showing them around the fire engines because every, every farmer, I think at some time in his life, started off by, um, by coming around the fire station and thinking, well, this is what I like and the atmosphere of danger and smoke and sirens and that's what brings them on. Now that life of excitement and danger belongs to the younger men. Today, Chief Fire Officer Fred Ponsford is a civilian for the first time in 43 years. After a final tour of inspection, the man who wouldn't talk about the role he played in the front lines in St Paul's when law and order broke down has handed in his kit for the last time.